Hi, welcome to Bright Hope Creations. I'm Kara, and today is part one of creating a scene with purple onion designs. I pre-stamped the images, sugar plum, and the cookies for Santa table, and the fireplace decor candle, the fireplace rug, the door decor logs, the stone fireplace, and the tree house. So we're going to start by just sketching out with a pencil, and I'm making a little burrow for this bunny so it's underneath that tree and here's where I wanted to put a little entryway down under the ground beneath that door and he needs some steps to get down so I'm just kind of uh, sketching out those steps not being real specific yet on how they're gonna look but I just want to make sure I've got them at the right angle and getting bigger as they're coming closer to the front of the scene. So here is uh, the landing. So this is where our steps are going to turn a little bit and he'll have one more step to get down. And then I draw the division between the floor and the walls. And now we need a root system for this tree and he uh, used that root system to help build his burrow so that it was nice and sturdy. <laughs> it's not going to collapse on him. And so we have some on this wall over here. And I'm just deciding kind of where these roots are going to go. Uh, they would be on the, that side of the stairs too to give that some sturdiness. And then on the wall behind the bunny and I'm just kind of coming through with uh, different lines. Now, this root system is gonna help him stabilize a doorway. It's going back there into his, I don't know, could be his kitchen or his bedroom. And the nice thing about just doing this with a pencil, real light, and I know I hope you can see it well because Obviously, I'm drawing quite lightly because I'm going to erase these pencil marks and go over them with Copic markers instead. I don't want to put in too many roots because I don't want it to overpower the the scene. The scene really is about our, our little bunny there in the front and how he's in his burrow. And I'll put in a few feathery little, uh, oh, you know, how the, those... Uh, roots get a little bit uh, veiny at the end but I'll probably change those up quite a bit along the way just kind of giving myself an idea with my pencil of what I want. These images were all illustrated by Stacy Yakula for Purple Onion Designs and they come on plain red rubber and I use a solid clear stamp to pick them up using the Misty stamp positioning tool I'll put a link in the description below of a video I made about how to use that and how easy it is to stamp with rubber stamps. So now this root I decided to change up and it's going in and out of the wall in the back. Now I can erase my lines and replace them with a Copic marker. This is a C0 just to get those lines in there and I'm putting a little bit more detail into those steps but it's such a light marker that if I want to change that I still can after I start coloring them and so he uh, he is an industrious bunny he used flagstone for his stairs and like any good architect they're not too steep and they're spaced out well for hopping up and down I'm using such a light marker and also you can see I stamped my images very lightly so that I can do some no line coloring. So once they're, uh, the images are colored up, you won't really see strong lines around them. It's still a, a cartoon look, but it's a softer look. So the images were stamped first uh, I stamped them down on a scratch piece of paper a couple of times so that when I stamped it down on this paper, it, I just uh, have that light image. That was a black 
uh, Memento Tuxedo Black ink, and that is good for Copic coloring because it doesn't smudge. The paper that I'm using is a Georgia Pacific cardstock. Uh, it's a it's a relatively cheap paper, and I can get it locally at Walmart. But use what works best for you with Copic coloring. All right, as I redraw the roots, I erase one line at a time so I can follow the other pencil line. And I went ahead and drew all of those lines in, you can see. And next you'll see I colored those roots, but don't worry, I, I will come back to showing how I color roots. I just laid down um, the E21 color on all of them and then shaded them in with an E23 and E25 and now I'm coming in with an E44 and 43 just to put in a little texture on those roots. The remainder of this video is just going to focus on these stairs and I'm coming in with the warm gray, the W, that's the W1, to find my shadows underneath the the rocks, the flagstone, and just make sure that I can visualize where those uh, dark shadows are going to be there behind the fireplace and then also in in that uh, entryway there that we are that's beyond our our room here. And then with my w five, I'm coming in to put in those shadows where I had the, the lighter ones marked out. So it's kind of like I mapped them out and then that allows me to keep putting in the dark color uh, where I want it instead of uh, having to figure out how to fix something later. Now these, the staircase is made out of dirt from the, from the hole that this uh, bunny dug, but I'm starting with the warm grays because I'm kind of putting in a foundation for my coloring. I will come back in with browns later to indicate that it is dirt, uh, but I want to make sure that the staircase doesn't get lost among the dirt walls. So with this W3, I'm just extending out those shadows, coming down a little further. And now with a, a W2 to finish off where the, where the stairs are underneath the flagstone. As a paper crafter, uh, card maker, I started, I picked up Copics a few years ago and they, they're intimidating at first, but I just played with them quite a lot and figured out what worked, how they blended, and now I really like them and they're my go-to medium. All right, so starting on that flagstone, and I'm doing this all in uh, cool grays, I'm giving that contrast there. And those two will be warmed up. I'll put in some warm grays later, but I wanted to kind of map them out or give them a base in cool grays. And this is the C1. Again, just trying to figure out where my shadows would be. So flagstone kind of comes in sheets in a way, or it just it breaks off in flat slabs. Uh, but they're not perfect, so I'm trying to give some depth to the edges to show the thickness of the stones and also indicate that they're not perfectly straight. So I decided to use the C3 as my dark shadow and then I came in and blended that with the C1 and then with the C0, but then I realized I can go darker here and so this is the C5 and I'm darkening up those shadows. It's really right where I went with the C3. And then I will blend it out with the other lighter colors. And I'll show you that. I'm leaving in most of my coloring if you're interested in watching the, the process. If not, feel free to speed this up if you'd like. But I know that I'm always interested to see how others uh, 
blend or decide where to put their their shadows. So this is the C4 and I'm just extending those shadows ever so slightly because I want there to be quite a gradual change from dark to light. There's the C2, so I skipped the C3. <laughs> and with the C2, I'm just putting in the rest of those darker shadows and blending that out a bit. I'm going to come back to these stairs later in the process once I have the walls all in and everything is colored just to kind of get the entire scene to be cohesive. And that's the nice thing about Copic colors. Uh, they're nice to layer so you can keep coming back. Well, the stones are pretty much colored with the cool grays, so I'm going to move on to some warm grays. And you can see this is a different sitting, a <laughs> different time I came back to the image, so I took a break. I guess I changed up my lighting between sittings, so it looks a little lighter. But anyway, so I'm putting in this warm gray because I don't want a huge contrast between those stones and the dirt underneath them uh, because they're well the stones wouldn't be all just one color they would have a little uh, variation in color and some contrast so you can see I'm putting in some more detail now uh, trying to get some thinner lines so that there's some striations in the stones. I want to mention that I'm not an artist and so I don't want anybody to be misled that I'm trying to teach something here uh, with the professional knowledge of that. This is just my experience with Copic markers and the process of coloring along the way. So I hope it helps you if you're new to Copic coloring or um, if you just enjoy watching other people color, uh, that this would be something that would give you some ideas, um, show you my thought process, and give you ideas of how to create a scene around your stamped images. I have another video, and I'll link that in the description below, on creating a simple scene. So scenes do not have to be elaborate, but I thought it would be fun to create a more elaborate scene and show some of those things that, that, would, that I would do in, in order to create one. So I came back with the cool gray now and putting in some more texture also kind of uh, blending in some of that warm gray into the cool gray. And now with the E40s, I'm going to go over where I had the warm grays for the dirt. And I like E40s with a warm gray because I, I think they are close enough to each other to work together. Um, it's a it's a very grayish brown, so that's why I like that. And as you saw with the roots, I put some of the 40 E40s onto the E20s, and that gives a different look. And it it just kind of brings the browns <laughs> and the grays together. I think. In part two of the series, I'll finish up the the background so that we can focus on our images and color those. And again, with no line coloring, it's a little bit different than coloring with the black lines around it. So just show you um, my tips and tricks for doing that. And I really learned from other uh, Copic colorers too. For example, Jane Allen, uh, is a wonderful artist and she does great things with Copic markers and 
I learned a lot from her. And I'll leave a link in the in the description, uh, a link to her blog. All right, after I put in those E's, I came in with the W's again, just to blend some of that E into the W, but also just to give some more uh, definition to the, the framework of those stairs. And I was working with the W2 for this, but then I decided that I could go a little darker, and so I used the W3. Well, the stairs are almost completed. I hope you stay tuned for part two in this series. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. It helps me know if you want to see more videos like this one. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye.